Welcome to a discussion about concussion. I'm Jeffrey Lauer with the Brain Injury Alliance of Iowa, and I'm pleased this morning to be with Megan Andreessen and Renee Crumley. They're both physical therapists with Unity Point, St. Luke's Hospital in Cedar Rapids. Megan and Renee, thank you for coming. So we're talking about concussion today, and um, you're both uh, physical therapists and you work in a rehab program here. Um, are, are there specific kinds of therapies that are recommended for a child, for example, after concussion? Um, well, often physical therapy and occupational therapy may be recommended, and they would first start with more of a detailed interview so they can review and ask questions on all the typical concussion symptoms that may occur. Um, as everybody knows, no two concussions are the same, so there would be an individualized treatment plan kind of developed right away. But first you got to figure out what's going on. Um, and then physical therapy would look at probably various sources of dizziness that could be coming from, um, and then figure out the treatment for those reasons. Uh, physical therapy may also look at balance. Um, they would look at how well somebody can see an object while their head's moving, um, because there are definitely exercises that can be done to improve that reflex. Physical therapy would look at their neck and shoulder muscles, see if there's anything going on there. Um, occupational therapy would look at and focus more on the thinking skills. Mm -hmm. So like memory, attention, um, can they multitask, how well they multitask, um, and their reaction time. And therapy in general um, definitely looks at trying to provide modifications, so how they can improve their home, their work, their school environments. Um, and then, you know, of course, look at exercises they can do to get their symptoms to improve. Wow, really holistic approach. Yes, for sure. So it's a teamwork. It's a team, it is a team approach, yeah. it sounds like. This is often provided to um, kids, in this case, with concussion that don't recover, if you will, in that first four to six weeks. Fortunately, uh, the literature suggests that about 70% of kids will recover, but this is for that 30% that have more persistent symptoms. So how do people get access to physical therapy and occupational therapy if they have those kinds of persistent symptoms? Um, typically, they're gonna be following up with their primary care provider, especially if, say if they entered the emergency department or urgent care, they will have a follow-up within a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and then they would continue following up with that primary care provider. Um, so, and have that discussion, you know, do I need physical therapy or occupational therapy? Um, ideally, when in doubt, order it, yeah. and then we can screen, we can give them ideas, definitely provide a lot of education to try to help reduce the symptoms that they're having. We know in the brain injury world that early, intensive, and specialized treatment makes a big difference in recovery. Is that the tr also the same with mild brain injury and concussion? I would say yes, yeah. um, and especially more and more research is even coming out now that, you know, after that first 24, 48 hours, more active exercise mm -hmm. is best. Yeah. And physical therapy, especially, and occupational therapy can help navigate that world of how much you can do without making your symptoms worse. So some challenging symptoms that may occur after concussion are problems with balance, dizziness, and difficulty focusing visually. Why does this occur? Well, I think there are lots of reasons it could occur. Some, it's this concussion is a energy crisis when it happens and often so we don't have the energy that we need to to take care of these things our brain and eyes and ears work together and it's a very complex system and you can break down in so many levels you could have problems with your gaze stabilization your ability to see clearly when you're moving you could also have a problem with the way your eyes and ears work together some of us are born with something like a lazy eye and mm often after a concussion that can be worsened even if you've accommodated for it in the past. You could have a problem with your ability just to um, move your eyes and read and be dizzy with head movements. You could have a problem with your balance because you know the inner ear is right behind this part of your head and mm -hmm. if you hit that part you could get a concussion of your inner ear and mm -hmm. so your balance could be impaired. We know now that many people have trouble with blood pressure regulation after a concussion so they could be lightheaded or dizzy from that, and that might be a reason. Um, there is some evidence that anxiety and depression can play um, uh, a part if someone is prone to, to that sort of 
thing. And then you can have a post-traumatic migraine, especially in someone who's maybe had a propensity toward migraine prior. So if you've had some other symptoms before you have a concussion, it sounds like concussion isn't like the best thing for them. Ah, the yes, lady. It, it yes. Can, it can make them worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's part of the, that can be part of the triggering component is it can. So you also said early, uh, earlier that there's an energy crisis. Um, is that like the whole body or is that, are we talking about the brain itself? In the brain, the neuromodulation of the brain, the way the neurotransmitters work, those kind of things. It's very it's a, complicated. System. Can I solve that by eating more energy? Just no, eating more candy bars? No, no. no. <laughs> So it's just wait and recover. Time and Time. make, yeah. Got it. New Thank pathways, you. yep. Thank you. So um, are there specific triggers for those kinds of things to happen? Uh, mental fatigue is likely a big factor. Um, other th factors could be visual demands or busy, loud environments, um, complex thinking skills or tasks that you're doing. Uh, quick head movements definitely mm. could bring it on. Sleeping issues are mm. a big issue as well. Um, it's all symptom driven. So, for example, if you know being on your screen or your tablet or your computer or your phone is giving you a headache or causing another symptom to get worse, then we need to look at reducing that. Um, you want to increase the activity as your symptoms improve. Um, you don't want to do too little, but you don't want to do too much either. So you got to find that sweet spot where you can still do activity, but not make the symptoms worse. Got it. So um, when we talked about the energy crisis combined with that uh, mental fatigue, is, is there, are there different parts of the times of the day that might be more challenging for a young person, um, morning versus afternoon? Uh, do we see these symptoms jump out at any given time? Well, a lot of times you might feel okay in the morning mm. and then you go and then especially if it's those mental tasks and the mental fatigue is going to bring it on, you may be at doing okay at school for that first hour, hour and a half, and if you're not taking the needed rest breaks to make sure you don't burn out of gas, mm. then you are likely gonna kinda do yourself in maybe for the rest of the day, where if you would've had scheduled rest breaks mid-morning, late morning, you might make it through that whole day of school, which is ideal. We wanna keep kids there mm. all day and not just go for the first two hours. I love your analogy about burning out of gas. Um, it sounds to me like before a concussion, there may be a larger gas tank that you're yes. able to refill, but after concussion, the tank might be smaller. Yes. And so. so the rest periods are w ways to f what? To fill the tank up? To, to fill the tank up and to not burn through it so soon. Got it. So. Yeah, that's a hard one. So the question is, does the tank typically get bigger over time and mm -hmm. it'll recover? Yes. Okay. So. Yes. Therapy, so. um, seeing uh, physical or occupational therapy might help that tank get bigger quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is what I, okay, thank you. Um, what can be done to treat or support people who have these types of concussion related dizziness or visual symptoms, vestibular symptoms? Are there any usual or typical treatments that you guys use? Um, typically, we work with the vestibular ocular reflex, which is how we see clearly when we're moving our head. So there's some specific exercises, but it's very individualized on everybody. You know, no two are alike. Everybody's a little bit different. Their tolerance to things is a little bit different. But we typically do vestibular ocular exercises, balance work, graded exercise to try to get that regulation of the blood pressure and heart rate and symptoms back together and increase activity. Sounds pretty technical. If I were to come in for a typical PT or OT experience, what might I, what might I expect? Um, what would be a, a usual or typical encounter with a PT or an OT, do you think? For concussion? Yes. Um, you know, the first visit we're going to try to figure out and tailor what what they're, what's going on with them because okay. somebody might not have dizziness they may have more difficulty with headache and that mental fatigue issue so we've got to figure out first what are their symptoms and what is going on in their daily life and then from there we can figure out which exercises they may need or which education they may need a lot of times the sooner they can get education and know what they can do that's making themselves better or worse is going to make that concussion hopefully not last as long if okay. they're taking care of themselves the way they could be. So connecting those dots mm -hmm. is a way that you can make that difference. Got it. Um, are there any differences you see 
for example, um, or any therapeutic differences you have between men and women, or younger versus older, younger kids versus older kids? I don't think the, that that is very supported in the literature. I just mm -hmm. think it's all so individual. Got it. You know, uh, kind of depends on you know what was going on with that person even before the concussion. Right. Can often and, and what's going on in their life in general with the concussion sometimes can make it worse. So a lot of times you may see those younger kids bounce back quicker because, quite frankly, they may not have as much going on. Mm -hmm. They may not have as much stress in their life. Mm -hmm. They may not have. You know, it's just have to deal with as much life in mm -hmm. general. They may bounce back a little quicker, but they may not too if they had attention deficit disorder or visual issues. So it's really hard, like Renee said, it, you just got to look at that individual. That is probably the biggest theme that I hear you saying is that if you've if you've seen one concussion, you've seen, seen one, one concussion, right. which can be obviously frustrating for a parent who wants the answers. Tell me what's going to happen. It doesn't sound like that's as easy to have happen as somebody might want or be able to be explained with a sprained ankle, for example, right. where there's a trajectory for healing. So individualized, holistic support is what I hear is available through these kinds of therapeutic mm -hmm. supports. All right. Anything else that you might share with um, family members or, or parents of kids with concussion that they should keep in mind as they're trying to move through a, a recovery process? I can think of, I know traditionally we thought, oh, give people all these supports, like their lights are bothering them, put them on sunglasses, do all kinds of crutches to help them get through the day. And I think the literature now is maybe supporting that maybe that's not the best plan to mm. use that stuff all the time mm. because we all have to live in this crazy world where there's lights and vision and we can't, you know, we need to get, our brains need to get used to it. Just like he talked with the sprained ankle, you mm. don't keep that brace on it forever or you won't, you know, get stronger. You want to kind of gradually try to get away, maybe switch, use your crutches as you need, but try not to be too over-reliant on them. So use the supports perhaps for a period of time, but be careful not to get dependent on them and push yourself within reason back and have licensed healthcare professionals on your team if possible right. to help guide you through that process. Yeah. Thank you very much for well, taking time. I'm Jeff Lauer with the Brain Injury Alliance. I've been talking this morning with Megan Andreessen and Renee Crumley, uh, both physical therapists with Unity Point Health at St. Luke's and Cedar Rapids. Uh, for more information about concussion in Iowa, you can look to iowaconcussion.org. Thank you very much.